if I had one weed charge 20 years ago and they keep on pulling that charge up, then why you still got that weed charge there? If it was 20 years ago and it was literally just one charge, go get it expunged. Go, it's probably like $150. Y'all pay that on some Jordans. World. So they want to see that you can come in and you can act like an adult. Like, we ain't got to babysit you because you know exactly what you need to do. Ain't nobody got to worry about what Tom, Dick, or Harriet. Oh, that ain't a good example. But y'all know what I mean. Y'all, you know, I'm from the country. That's the one we used to always use. But hey, y'all, this is Tamika, the face behind Hey HR. And I am just ready to dive into this background screening issues. I have posted a couple background screening videos on my channel and they have really done well. A lot of you guys are watching them. A lot of you are commenting. I'm replying to questions all day long. I'm getting questions I really wasn't targeting, but it actually works out well because I am comfortable with background screenings. And so I realized there's some questions I didn't hit or some confusion I put in both of those videos. And this video is here to make sure that you have a full understanding. So before we dive in this, I need you to do me a huge favor. If you want me to continue paying attention to what you need and you wanna support my channel, do me a huge favor and hit the subscribe button. Definitely hit the like button. And obviously you can comment because I will reply to the comments, but it really helps my channel when you subscribe and when you hit like. So you guys wanna know what are these companies looking for when they give you this job offer and they do this background screening or this pre-employment check then you definitely want to keep watching because I'm gonna just tell y'all what we looking for so some of the things that makes up a successful background screening pre-employment check background check there's so many names that you can call it, but it's pretty much a basis of saying, these are the things that we want to see you successfully complete before we say your job offer is confirmed. So you'll always notice that whenever you get your offer letter or you get the background screening authorization forms, the consumer authorization forms, then normally that is saying your job offer is contingent upon these things. That's a huge word, y'all. That's a huge word. People take it lightly, but contingent means if you don't do these things for us, then we're not going to give you this job offer. Even though we've extended it to you, we've negotiated with you, we have given you an offer letter for it, we've given you a start date for it. If you don't complete these things, it's not going to work out. And so some of the things that makes a background screening successful is obviously passing the drug screening. So drug screening is a portion of a background screening. Not all companies do background screenings. Some companies may decide, okay, I only want a physical. I only want a county check. I only want a criminal check. I only want a credit check. There are different parts that make up a background screening and not all companies pick the same thing. Sometimes they just want to check your references and make sure that you have truly worked at wherever your resume say you've worked. I mean, there's so many different parts of a background screening that makes up a background screening. If you really want to know the details, you're going to have to ask your company, like, what are you checking for? Or you have to ask the background screening company themselves. Now, I highly suggest staying away from asking that because it looks like you're concerned that something may come up. So I wouldn't really hone in on that. It's pretty obvious. Just think about it. If you're going to do a job where you're driving, they're going to do a driving check. And if you're driving their vehicle, they're probably going to do a criminal check. If you're going to be working with patients or working with medication, they're probably going to do a drug, drug screening. If you have to do a lot of physical work within whatever you're doing, they're probably going to do a physical. So it just makes sense because we really decide what is inclusive of that background screening based on the job and the job duties. So every time that I've implemented background screenings or I've worked with them, which I've done that for so many years in my career, then I always look at the job description and what's needed for that job. Just because I'm working for the same company, that doesn't mean everybody's getting the same background screen. It just doesn't work that way. The biggest difference that's, that's pretty easy across the board for everyone is if you're not getting a company credit card, if you're not going to you know, intermingle with the company money in any way, then you don't have to worry about having a credit check. So a credit check is normally done for like those that's going to work in your finance department. It's like your accountants, your finance operators, um, or those who have a company wide credit card. So, and, and some companies would say, yeah, I'm giving them a credit card, but I'm only giving it for $5,000. So I'm not going to do a credit check for that, or I'm only giving it for $2,000. So if they're going to give you a credit card, that's going to have 10 or $15,000. Then they're going to say, no, I would definitely want a credit check. Cause they want to make sure that you are going to use that credit card, right? People think that you're looking for a credit score. They're not 
not looking for a credit score. They're looking for behavior. So same things that they're looking for whenever they do a county or a state check or a national nationwide um, check. A successful background screening, because I've gone all over the world and I got off my list. <laughs> so let me just look at my list so that <laughs> I don't go all over the place because this was intended to be a short video. But a successful background screening includes, you know, passing drug screening results, no charges that you did not explain. So that form where you're going to authorize them to do the background screening or on your job application will say, do you have any charges? And that's usually a yes or no. And if it's yes, then you normally explain. If you didn't explain them there, that brings concern to the employer. A successful one would be either you said no and there's no charges that came up or you said yes and the same charge that came up on your background screening is the same one that you explained on the actual form. So that makes for a successful one. I hope that made sense. Another thing that makes for a successful background screening is no repetitious activity within a seven to 10 year period. So that's like, if you had a DUI, did you have more than one? If you had a CDV, did you have more than one? Um, if you had a credit issue on your credit where you didn't pay a bill, did you not pay multiple bills? So they're looking for like repetitious activity, not necessarily one-offs. Most time one-offs you've already explained on your form. Um, and you can easily, and it just doesn't disqualify you most times. So one-offs are not the issue. It's the repetitious activity within a small period of time. And typically in the U.S., a small period of time, five to seven, 10 years. No violent charges. Practically no company wants you to have violent charges, especially if they were recent. They want to see that you can come in and I'm talking more about like the corporate world. So they want to see that you can come in and you can act like an adult. Like we ain't got to babysit you because you know exactly what you need to do. Ain't nobody got to worry about what Tom, Dick or Harry at all. Oh, that ain't a good example. But y'all know what I mean. Y'all, you know, I'm from the country. That's the one we used to always use. But nobody have to worry about where you at, what you're doing. You can be autonomous and you can get the job done without somebody babysitting you all day. So that's what we're looking for with violent charges. If you lose your temper on a regular, now we got to worry about if we put you with Stacy, now y'all going to have a bad day. You're going to curse her out. Da, da, da. So that's the thing we're looking for when we look for violent charges. And they want to say you got an active driver's license. If you're supposed to drive a company vehicle or even drive your vehicle for company purposes and we're reimbursing you for gas or mileage, we want to see that your driver's license is active. That not only says that you're a good person, right? But the biggest thing is that when we go to get workers comp covered for you driving your vehicle, our insurance rates are lower. So there's different reasons for all of these things, y'all. So another thing is no repetitive driving issues. So if you had your license suspended once, do you have it suspended every six months? And what are the reasons why you have it suspended? Most things we look for is the DUI. So if you have that, like how often are you having it? So those are the biggest thing. If you're speeding at a high rate, like how often are you speeding at this high rate? You got multiple tickets where you're speeding high or are you just like five miles over the limit? So at one time, um, no high debt. So the credit check, I already explained to y'all, we're looking for like high debt. Did you get a whole bunch of credit that you knew you couldn't afford and didn't have a reason for why you didn't pay it back? And to verify your job history. So I already told you guys, we just want to make sure that you're not lying on this, this resume or this application. The biggest thing we're checking for is the dates and the job title. I have gotten so many comments and videos where people are like, Tamika, I did the wrong date for this. I did the wrong date for that. Just send an email to your background screening company and probably to the recruiter explaining that. Don't send it to the hiring manager. They have no right to know your business. And the only reason why you're going to tell that recruiter is because they should be telling the background screening company. But by the time they're doing the background screening, the background screening company should have reached out to you. So you just talk back and forth with them. If you're talking back and forth with them, the back background screening company will never tell us what you guys went back and forth about because legally that's not something we should know. We're looking to just see if you meet the qualifications. We ain't trying to see what, what rabbit holes you had to go through to meet them. And then the last thing is we just check in for that pre-employment physical. So we just want to make sure that according to that job description, you can actually do whatever that job says you can do. And not that, you know, this job requires you to lift 20 pounds, you know, 60% of the day, and you're going to only lift 10 pounds, 5% of the day. So that's kind of the things we're checking for. That's kind of a comprehensive list of everything that makes for a successful background screening. But one thing I want to notice, and I, I thank the Lord for this, that my videos are being seen in the UK, my videos are being seen in Canada, my videos are being seen in India, and I am so blessed to have had that type of reach. I, I am just beside myself, <laughs> this small country girl I'm from the South, so that's huge. But everything that I'm telling you guys 
is particularly for U.S. candidates. Though I do currently work for a global company, I don't handle background screenings for that company. So I can't give you information on what we're looking for. I'm not expertise in that area. I'm not comfortable in that area. Um, someone else handles that for us, not me. I literally recruit. So when I talk about recruiting globally, then I'm telling you U.S. or outside of the U.S. web, it doesn't matter. But when I'm telling you about background screenings, then this is particularly for U.S. candidates because I've done background screenings, worked on background screenings, implemented background screenings for U.S. candidates only. Sorry if I bust anybody bubble. If you don't fit the bucket, I'm sure you about to click off right now. My bad. Um, but I just want to be real with you because I get questions like international questions and I'm like, I'm not sure. The only difference that I will say is if you are applying for a U.S. job and you are outside of the U.S., then these answers will apply to you. OK, most times they apply to you if you're applying for a U.S. role. So that's that's more clarity. So I'm going to give you all a few pro tips. I'm going to give you all just a few pro tips that we're going to dive on here because I really came up with these pro tips from the questions that you guys are putting in the comments of those past two videos. The first pro tip, pull your county records, pull your state records, pull your city records for every single county city or state that you've lived in in the last seven to ten years and honestly if you pull the county records that trumps them all because the county records are the only records that are legally required to stay accurate please don't pull them online it's not required to stay on accurate online it's required to stay accurate within that county office for some of y'all if y'all look at lived in hick towns it can give you some hell it gives me hell on some background screenings but if you live in big cities you shouldn't have a problem see what it's saying that's what the background screening company is going to pull. So you pull it yourself so you know exactly what's coming up. Another pro tip, check your public records with your name. So you can, you know, just like how we can check and see who in jail and who not and blah, blah, blah. Go check your public records through these county sites and see. Just like Google your name and the search area and see what comes up. Does a, a new court date posing in the next six months come up? Do you see that some charges came up? I mean, there's some things that they have to report publicly. Pull your name, like Google your name and see what comes up. Because that's the stuff that the background screening company is going to pull. So if you have this opportunity, y'all get expungements. Like, I don't understand when people are like, oh, I had one weed charge 20 years ago and they keep on pulling that charge up. Then why you still got that weed charge there? If it was 20 years ago and it was literally just one charge, go get an expungement. It's probably like $150. Y'all pay that on some Jordans. Go pay that money and get that thing off of your credit. Like, why would you keep it there if it's going to stop you from eating, man? Like, if it's keeping you from getting your bags, from leveling up in your career, from going to the next level, like, do what makes sense. If I knew I needed to get an expungement on my record, I ain't getting these breeds. These breeds cost me a grip. I'm going to put that money on getting my expungement because that's important because that's going to not only give me money for now, it's going to give me money repetitively. So get these expungements whenever you can. Another pro tip is inform your employers of what's on your records, like literally on that form. Go ahead and write it in there. Don't be terrified to do it because honestly, what you will do is if you don't put it there, now you're losing the job for lying and not the charge. So just put it there. Like, tell us what happened. It's cool. Ain't nobody judging you. Like, we done figured out you're the best person for this job. We need you on board. That's the small stuff. Now, dispute any inaccuracies that you see in your background screening with that background screening company. You normally have a certain period of time from the time that they find something. They're going to let you know and they're going to tell you, hey, reply to this. Y'all look out for the emails. Look out for mails and the letter. Like, I mean, and letters. <laughs> look out for letters in the mail. But look out for documents from that background screening company so that you can reply to it and let them know that this is an inaccurate and this is the information I have to show you is inaccurate. If you have to go to that county office to get that deposition that shows that it got dropped, but it's still showing that it's active and it didn't get dropped, then get that deposition and send it into them. Like advocate for yourself. Like this is where the HR can't help you. You got to help yourself on this one. My final reminder, hiring managers has no right to know. I already told y'all this anyhow. So this ain't a pro tip. This is just a, like a don't be crazy person. Uh, do not tell these hiring managers what you got going on. They don't know. HR is not telling them. I've, I've literally like lost jobs because I constantly get in battles with hiring managers who take it to my hiring manager um, or who to the person I directly report to. If I don't, you know, me and that person is sitting horse well, you know, like country folks say, then they get upset because I didn't tell them. I'm not telling them. Legally, I'm not supposed to tell them legally. That's your right according to the Fair Credit Reporting Act. I don't have to tell them. If y'all working for the right companies with people with the right intentions like I am, I am they're not going to tell them. If they do tell them, then you got another issue on your hand and the issue ain't the damn background screener. I hope that was helpful because y'all, 
it amazes me how that those background screening videos have been out there for a while like almost a year for both of them if not over a year and i think that one of them has like 10,000 views which is crazy because my you know it's only been out there some months not even a year and so i feel bad that you guys are in this situation like if y'all notice i reply to your comments as soon as i see them when it comes to these background screenings because i know it's definitely you know a difference between being able to pay your light bill and, and being able to get evicted or just moving out of somebody's house who don't want you there. Like life gets rough, man. And I know that you waiting on this job to come through now and you ain't sleeping at night. Some of y'all in the US commenting on these videos in the middle of the night, you ain't sleeping because you waiting on these results. I ain't gonna tell y'all no lie, I'm here for you. And I had some hard times. That's the biggest reason that I went out and educated myself on background screenings and work real hard to implement them right and follow the right way to conduct them because I feel like there's just too many people that don't know about them that work in HR and it's just annoying. Discrimination happens. Again, that's one reason that I started my YouTube channel. That's another reason why it's expanded into HR. If you guys found this video helpful, then y'all will probably find my emails helpful. So definitely click on the link below and subscribe because I send out information on a regular basis that can help y'all through this process. And so I'm just going to let you know that if you like to make what videos you talking about, that I'm going to put the videos right here where you guys can see that I had one video. I had two separate videos. So I'll place them each here so that you guys can see them. And those are videos where I went into a deep dive about background screenings. I am a consultant for a background screening company. Um, I've implemented background screenings at several different companies. So that made me go out on a limb to say, hey, this is a part of HR as well. And this is my expertise and I want to educate you guys. So check out those videos. I'll put them at the end. I'll put the links in the description box. Definitely hit the like button if you found value in this video. And so if you stayed this long, then you found value. So if you found value, value in this video, I want you to comment down below. You own it, girl. <laughs> You own it, girl. That's all I want you to put in the comments below. Thank y'all so much for watching another Hey HR video. I am just thrilled to continue to make these videos for you guys. And I just honestly, literally, I say this all the time, but I truly mean it. I can't wait to see y'all on the next video.